Welcome back, you're watching Property It's Hot. Up next on our Green Home segment, Prashanta Roy, a tech guru by profession and a green crusader by passion, rebuilt his ancestral residence in Delhi into an eco-friendly, sustainable home. Let's hear out his story and take inspiration from the unique design of his house that makes it so green. in New Delhi CR Park is India's first registered individual green home rated 5 star by Terry. When owner Prashanta Roy set out to rebuild his parents' home, he was convinced he wanted an energy efficient house. He soon realized he was going to be the guinea pig for a bigger experiment. There is really no other support system in Delhi, there is no incentives. Uh, so there was really no point going to government departments and trying to do anything as an individual. Uh, Terry was very supportive. Uh, at that point of time, Terry had just uh, the larger Greha system, which was equivalent to LEED, and which is really aimed at commercial buildings. Uh, this was a home. So for the first uh, home in the country to register for a green rating, we actually were able to discuss with them and they actually adapted the system for individual homes and called it Swagriha. Armed with Terry's green design guidelines, Roy enlisted an architect to help him interpret them in brick and mortar. My first question was, it's not about a green home or having a green home. You have to have a green lifestyle. So he did agree to that. He said, I'm prepared to do that. So it was a kind of symbol of a memory of his old house that we reused all the bricks, we reused all the wood, all the metal, all the even rubble that came out of that. Every tree that was here, planted by his mother or his father, were carefully planted in a park and then replanted in this house. A home has to be made green from its first brick. To minimize the carbon footprint, only fly ash bricks were used. The outer walls are made of autoclaved, aerated concrete that expands like a foam block and works as a great heat barrier. To call a home green, one has to cut down on the power consumption that goes into keeping the house cool. Here, the Roy's have achieved passive cooling by creating this beautiful terrace garden that insulates the floors below from the heat of the sun, making it a green home in the truest form. The rest of the terrace is styled in white to bounce off sunlight. To further keep the roofs cool, inverted earthen pots have been embedded inside. They act as air pockets preventing heat transfer. They also function as a waterproofing layer. Such small measures keep this house four to five degrees cooler than other homes of this size in their block. Green One also has tall shafts at the rear of the house to circulate air and let sunlight stream into the rooms. In fact, highly reflective paint has been used on walls throughout the house to optimize natural light. Especially in a house like Delhi, we have to have deeply recessed windows, especially if they are on the west side, because that lets in a lot of radiation. So most of the balconies in this house are deeply recessed. Plus, each floor, since it's like an apartment building, each floor has a terrace garden on the balcony. So there's a lot of greenery which also provides shade. And then to supplement that, there is some amount of incident radiation, so we use a double glazing. Two layers of glass with a vacuum in between, that insulates. Green One comes powered with clean energy generators like solar water heaters and solar power cells. The choice of electronic devices is also very critical. Only 5 star rated air conditioners, fans and LED lights keep Green One truly green. The house also holds within itself a rainwater harvesting system and a sewage treatment plant. When we moved in, actually, uh, frankly, we didn't get uh, any savings. We found our electricity bill similar to what it was earlier uh, per person when you calculate. Uh, and we found uh, the reasons for that. We found, for example, we had put in, there was a lot of complexity. There was a lot of pumps, sensors which switch on automatically and so on. Things like that we cut off. Uh, we were able to drop our electricity to 20 to 30 percent below. Green One looks and feels like any other urban home today so the comfort factor is surely encouraging. But what about the cost of building it? 
green one costed 10% more per square foot compared to a conventional house its size. But this additional cost pays back over 4 to 5 years. Apart from the pride of being a change maker who encouraged a clutch of other homeowners to aim for green ratings, Prashanto also has reservations. The environment in India, from vendors to policy makers, is one of ignorance towards green concepts. At the individual home level, uh, I would like to see incentives on solar power. And one very simple thing which Delhi has been, uh, you know, kind of vacillating on, which is net metering, which basically lets you generate electricity and spill it over to the grid and get paid for it. Uh, because in the absence of that, what's happening is actually the electricity that I'm generating is going back to the grid and I'm actually paying for that electricity because it's clocking my meter, which is a unidirectional meter. So that's bizarre. I'm generating extra electricity and I'm landing up paying for it. Prashanto's experience with building his green home comes as a test case for others to learn from and for authorities to plug in the policy level gaps. With camera person Sumi Diogam, Vasudha Sharma, NDTV. average home buyer today is spoiled for choice when it comes to flooring options. From laminates to bamboo, marble and even wooden flooring. Which option works best for you and why? We find out. Plain vanilla ceramic tiles plastered across the floor in most houses. This is no longer a norm in India. From expensive Italian marble to engineered hardwood and even the basic vitrified tiles, home buyers in India are today very discerning when it comes to the kind of tiles they are using. Earlier it used to be quite like you know third party, okay, you decide and let us know. But now you know they want to come with us to the showrooms and and you keep having a lot of these exhibitions, you know. So we also recommend that please go and see the different uh, materials available in the market, the different sizes. And then we had one client who had come down from Dubai and. And he spent, I think, almost two months finalizing the tiles, you know. So, yes, clients are definitely investing because it's, everyone wants to do the best. And uh, there are definitely, it's, I think, uh, the customer's privilege because there are so many options available in the market to choose from now. Some of the most popular options for home buyers purchasing flooring include affordable options like vitrified tiles that retail starting at 45 rupees a square foot, laminates that retail for 75 to 95 rupees per square foot, and options for those with a higher budget include Italian marble that retails at about 450 rupees a square foot and solid or engineered wood that retails at 100 to 500 rupees a square foot. Experts suggest picking flooring for homes depending on the kind of usage each home will have. If, if it is going to be a natural material which is uh, fairly anti-skid, it can easily be used all across the house. But if it's going to be a material which is polished and slippery, and if the, if the house has uh, outdoor areas, then there's, uh, you know, there, there is a risk of people slipping, if, especially if it's wet. Well, you know, you have these big tiles in the market which are like a gl glossy finish. Now, that would be okay uh, in an area where you're not going to put this scratchy footwear, and you have to make sure you're maintaining it, you know. But if you're, it's going to be an area where a lot of uh, footwear walking happening, it will definitely get scratched over a period of time, and then it won't look so nice. So things like that, or for example, if you're putting Italian marble, you have to make sure that you put in the maintenance a little bit care into it. Otherwise, it tends to absorb, you know, uh, oil, color very fast. And it's not just bedrooms and bathrooms. The average Indian home buyer is also looking to spruce up the outdoors as well, with the going trend being hardwood floors. If we take outdoors, earlier outdoors were just left shabbily. Uh, they would put some kind of tile and leave it there. Today, people dress their outdoors up. So whether it's a balcony at home or a swimming pool deck or, or a terrace garden, today you'll find wooden flooring for the outdoors, you'll find grass for the outdoors. People dress it up and use the outdoor space a lot. Experts say that while wooden floors are the most popular today, they need to be picked depending on how humid a climate a city has. If you're on a budget, experts also suggest buying tiles and flooring of smaller dimensions to help keep down costs. From Bengaluru, Lakshmi Shivdas for NDTV. That's all the time we have on this edition of Property It's Hot. 
We wait eagerly for your thoughts and suggestions on what you want to see on the show. To find out the latest hotspots of the various regions, you can catch our daily edition, The Property Show, region-wise each day at 7 and 11 p.m. only on NDTV Prime. Log on to ndtv.com slash property for all the latest updates and write to us at hotproperty at ndtv.com. Until we meet again, this is Radhika signing off. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.